Hi everyone, welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to try to show you guys how to create a model using Unity 3D and ML Agents API from scratch. You'll, we'll create the scene together and then we'll actually get it training all in one. It's pretty quick and hopefully by the end of this we'll all be better prepared to make more complex environments in uh, agent learning systems. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is pull up your Unity Hub and we're going to hit new project. We're going to hit 3D project. Let's just call it something like this. And I'm going to save that in this folder. Hit create. The Unity engine is going to start. You'll notice that I'm using Ubuntu, but you can use any operating system. The instructions are basically the same. The only thing that's going to change is how you access files and codes and some of the terminal um, command lines. So once that starts, this is your Unity editor. If you're not familiar, you have your game scene, which is in the middle. You have your hierarchy window, which is going to tell you all about your ob objects. Your inspector window over here, which tells you uh, properties of specific game objects. Your project assets and packages, which is down here on the bottom, and a console. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a uh, agent that is going to have to roll around on a floor and run into a target. So the first thing we're going to need is create 3D object, right click, create 3D object, and then hit plane. That's going to be our floor. So we'll just rename this floor. We're also going to need the 3D object cube. We're going to use that as our target. Just rename cube. Oh. We'll rename that target. And then let's also create the 3D object sphere. We're going to rename that agent. So our agent will be our sphere. And another thing you can do to make your life simple is create an empty object. Nothing will appear over here, but you have this game object here. And we're going to just rename that training area or whatever you want. And this is basically going to allow us to group our uh, game objects together and keep everything organized and together which is good for us. So the first thing we need to do is like make this setup better. So we want to go to target, make sure floor is properly positioned, go to target, and you can manually move around these objects, but I find that kind of difficult. So I'm just gonna go over here into the transform field and I'm gonna head and go ahead and set up where I want my target to be initially. Let's just put it over there. And likewise for the agent, um, Let's just put it a little bit off the floor on the other side um, of the target of the cube. So now we have our agent, we have our sphere, and we have our target, our cube, and we have a floor for them to operate on. We need to specify some uh, properties of our sphere that allows it to interact in this environment. So the first thing we need to do is allow it to have some physical properties using a physics emulator called rigid body. So if you go over here under the agent in the inspector window, click add component, we're going to type in rigid in the search bar and get this rigid body component. So you can see here, I'm going to collapse some of this stuff just so it's easier to see. You can see here rigid body brings up this component. We don't need to change anything. This is going to be a simple tutorial. Um, so don't worry about changing anything. All right, so the next thing we need to do, now that our sphere is able to move with uh, physical properties of the world, we need to tell it how to move and how to learn and stuff like that. So go over here to add component, and we're gonna type in new script. And when we get a new script, we're gonna name it. Let's name it the same thing as our agent because the script applies to the agent. And you'll see in your project window that you have this C-sharp script that comes up and you can edit that. If you click on the C-sharp script, you'll see in the inspector window, it previews the code for you, which is really helpful sometimes. But I wanna edit this in my favorite text editor, so I'm just gonna go over here, and I'm going to navigate my uh, project folder. It, the, the file we need is gonna be in assets. We named it agent, it's the CS file. So let's load that up. This is what you get with every new script file. <clears throat> And this is normally for static environment stuff, but we need to use the ML Agent API library. So instead of you guys watching me try to figure out where to put all the semicolons properly, 
I'm just going to copy and paste the code we're going to need today in here. And so now let's go through it. So the first thing we had to change, we kept these first two lines the same, but we needed to add this Unity ML Agent package, and we also wanted to specify sensors from the ML Agents package. And we have this public class called Roller Agent. Um, we actually need to change this. This is whatever you named the script to, or whatever you named the script. So we named the script agent. So that should just say public class agent. And over here, um, we changed mono behavior to agent. So agent is a class of the ML agents package. And so we need to inherit that. So the next thing we need to do before we start anything is to add this rigid body component that we gave our Unity editor. So we just need to say there's going to be this private class called rigid body and we're, gonna, we're just going to rename that our body. So upon start, which only happens at the beginning of the entire thing, we need to get that rigid body component. So you can just say that our body is going to get this component from the rigid body physics emulator. And so now we're ready to worry about some more specific things. So like I said, our sphere needs to interact with our target. So in order to do that, we need to specify that there is going to be this class called target that is going to have this transform property about it. So when you make that, um, when you make that, it's going to create a field over in the script that will change later. So let's, let's not worry about that now, but just know that as soon as you put something public, it's going to show up in your Unity editor. So let's talk about the most important things that you need when you're using ML agent package. There's three of them. The first thing that's really important is this on episodes begin call. Whenever you call this, it's going to tell the scene how to set itself up after each episode. So an episode is basically just a task, um, one task, one uh, motion of the task that we're trying to get the agent to do. So in our case, we just want the agent to roll into the target. So either it fails or completes the task. If it completes it, it ran into the target. If it fails, it probably fell off the floor or something weird happened. So every time the task ends, we need to start a new task using this on episode begin. And we're going to say that uh, if our agent, so this, if our agent, this, has this transform local property in the Y dimension less than zero, which means it probably fell off the floor, then stop the ball from rolling you know, with the rigid body component, velocity, angular velocity, and regular velocity, set those three dimensional vectors to zero, and create a new position for our agent, which is this, that's a 3D vector, that's going to place it on the floor in the zero position in the X dimension, the 0.5 dimension, or 0.5 in the Y dimension, and zero in the Z dimension. Okay, so now what we've done, if we, if we specified that if we fall off, uh, when we start a new episode, put the, tar put the agent back on the floor in this position. We also want to tell the target how to get set up at the beginning of each episode. We don't want the target always to be in the same spot because our model won't be able to generalize well to the task. It'll just have to uh, learn to go in the same place every time. So we're going to actually set this target local position at the beginning of each episode to a new vector that takes a random X and Z position is an, and is a little bit off the floor. Okay, so that takes care of on episode begin. That's all we need to set up our scene every time a new episode is called. The next important thing you need for ML agents package is this collect observations. So this is going to define our observation vector that we give to the ML learning algorithm um, to figure out which actions to take. So in our case, we want to specify uh, one, where is the target? So the target is going to have this uh, sensor add observation of the local position, which is an X, Y, and Z component. We also want the agent to know where it is on the floor itself besides the target. So we're going to give that same, another observation with the agent's local position. Again, that's an X, Y, Z coordinate. So that's already six numbers. And then we also want the agent to know how fast it's moving in horizontal and vertical direction. So we're going to call the velocity from the X and Z coordinates from the rigid body component and add those observations to our sensor that we're creating as this observation vector. So that's it. That's everything you need for collect observations for this task. And if you notice, we have eight numbers here, right? X, Y, and Z for the target and the agent 
and the velocity in the x and z coordinates. So this is very important to think about what your agent needs to see in order to make proper decisions and learn what actions to take. So in order to take actions, we need to specify the less important thing for ML agents package, which is on action received. That's going to be this function here. <clears throat> and in order to do that, basically we want to define our actions as being able to control the velocity and uh, you know the, the velocity of the agent. So we're going to create this 3D vector called control signal, and it's going to start at zero. And we're just going to specify it's a two-dimensional vector. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying there's an x component and a z component, which is <clears throat> the first and second dimension, respectively. So now we just set up the action vector. We haven't actually populated that. We're going to do that in this line here. We're going to say from the rigid body physics emulator, add force to the control signal with some, uh, with some modification of speed. And you'll notice up here we set this public float speed and we can change that since we made it public. Since we made it public instead of private, we can change that in the Unity editor as we're training or as we're testing to figure out what's an appropriate speed. Okay, so now we've defined our action vector. That's great. We're almost done with the on action receive step. We also need to say what are the rewards that the agent is going to get in order for it to learn properly. What's its goal? What is it trying to do? And when it does something, how does it know if that's a good thing to do or not? The best thing that we can do to keep this simple is to just make the agent only get a reward when it runs into the target. So in order to figure out if the agent has ran into the target, we'll need to figure out something called distance to target. That's what we're going to call it, distance to target. And this is just a vector with the distance from the agent to the target. Super simple, right? Now that we have that, we can say if our, if our agent is less than some operator set threshold, so we're just going to set this to 1.42, if our agent is this close to our target, then you found the target and we're going to give you a reward of 1. And look how easy that is. You just say set reward of 1. It's so easy with ML agents. And like I said earlier, this is a terminal state. So we need to tell the episode that it's finished. It completed the task. All you have to do is call end episode and that'll automatically trigger on episode to begin and set up the next episode for the task. Um, unless you've reached the max epics, then of course the whole thing will just terminate. But as I told you, there's a second terminal state. That's if uh, our agent accidentally falls off the platform. So we also need to say that if uh, our agent Y position is less than zero, that means it probably fell off the platform and we also need to end the episode so it can begin again. This is really necessary because if we fall off the platform, there is no way for the agent to get back onto the platform, right? It is using the floor and the physics from the rigid body emulator to figure out what it can do uh, based on gravity and things like that. So you have to tell it, hey, if you fell off, there's no way you can get back. Just reset and start a new episode. So that's it. That's all the code. We could start training from there. But, 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 I'm going to show you guys a really important thing that I recommend you always do before starting training. You want to set a specific behavior type called a heuristic. A heuristic just allows us to override the regular behavior commands and not do any learning but use user input, so you and I would be the user, user input to control the agent, just to make sure the scene and everything is set up correctly. So in order to do that, we're just gonna set up this heuristic operation, and we're gonna say our actions, which are similar to our vector actions up here, our actions are actually just gonna be keyboard input in the horizontal and vertical direction. Okay, so if we go ahead and save this, and we go back to our Unity editor, it's going to populate, right? And it says over here that we already have an error. And that's because whenever you're going to use ML agents, um, even if you have it installed on your local device, you still need to install it into the project itself. So what you can do is go up here to Window, and then you can go to Package Manager. And you want to make sure in Package Manager that you have this tab here set to Unity Registry. This is like the store that you can get any packages from. Uh, make sure you're not in project or my assets. You won't be able to find it in there easily. So just scroll down here to ML agents, <clears throat> click on that and click install. It's going to take a couple, uh, maybe a couple of minutes to install. So let's just recap what we've done so far. 
We made a scene that included our game floor, our agent, which is a sphere, and our target, which is a cube. We told uh, the positions of these things in the scene, and then we set up our agent with this rigid body physics emulator so it knows how to behave according to gravity and laws of physics and stuff like that. Then we went in and created a new script and edited the behaviors um, that should happen uh, for the agent in order for it to move along with the on episode begin of how to set up the scene and the uh, on action received, which says once the ML algorithm gets the observation vector, what actions is it capable of taking and how to apply those actions. And as I said, we also added in that special behavior heuristic so we can test it ourselves. So it looks like this is downloaded. Just go ahead and exit out of that. And our error went away, which is very good. And you can see over here, uh, our script is now populated in here. So if, if your computer is slow, sometimes you might have to give Unity 3D a couple minutes to register the changes that you've made in the script. So you don't start doing stuff before you see that you know everything is loaded properly. So if we go back to our agent over here, um, you'll see that in our agent script, we have these two new fields that popped up. We have something called target and speed. We talked about speed, right? I said that we made this public class speed. It's gonna make this field over here. You can change this to five or whatever. Let's keep it at 10. And here we have another thing called target. So in our code, Early in the beginning, I said we needed to interact the sphere with the target. So we set up this field for target. But the, the agent still doesn't know which game object you want to use as the target. So you need to specify that we're going to use the cube. So you can do that by clicking on target or clicking and dragging target into the agent inspector window in the target field here. Sometimes that's a little difficult because if you click on it, it switches to the target inspector window. So you can also do that by just going to this little tiny dot over here and then selecting uh, whichever game object you want to use as the target. So obviously we're going to use our target cube and double click that. Okay, so before we test, we just need to do two more steps. We need this thing called decision requester. So we're just going to add new component decision requester. That allows, uh, that tells us how many decisions we're trying to make during the episode. So changing this changes your uh, computational complexity. Let's just set it to 10. You're going to be able to run this on a CPU, um, and so don't worry too much uh, about uh, worrying about computational complexity right now. Just know in the future that this is where you can increase your, um, your speed or decrease your speed uh, depending on what you're trying to do with the ML algorithm. All right, the last thing we need here is behavior parameters. So like I said um, <clears throat> earlier, you can name this whatever you want. Um, let's just call it rollerball. That's a behavior. Um, we need to set the vector observation to a space size of eight, right? We had two x, two components or two game objects that have x, y, z coordinates, so that's six numbers and then we have the velocity of the agent and the x and z component so that's eight uh, vector observations uh, state space of eight and now we also need to tell the unity editor and the ml agent uh, how many actions we can take and we're going to take continuous actions the ball is just going to roll around it's not going to jump tile to tile so it's continuous and it can do that in the x and z velocity coordinate according to the rigid body physics emulator space size of two. Okay, so now we can set this to GPU if we want. And here you can select model and stuff like that. We're gonna take care of that later. So we're ready to go. We could start training from here. But like I said, we're gonna do testing because we wanna be careful and we wanna make sure that we don't mess anything up. So you're gonna go to behavior type, set that to heuristic only, and then go up here and press, press play. So when you press play, it's going to take a minute to render, but it'll switch from the scene view to the game view. And once you're in game view, we can use the keyboard to control the sphere. So I'm controlling the sphere right now. And if I make it run into the target, a new episode started. So the on episode begin was called and the cube was transported uh, to another a random space on the floor. And a new episode is beginning now. So likewise, if I fall off the floor, it sets the sphere and the 
clue back on the game floor, which is what we wanted. That's what we set up in on episode begin. So every time I terminate, I either fall off the floor or I hit the cube, on episode begin gets called and I'm able to keep going. So this looks like it's working properly. Very important little tidbit here. Um, when you are in play, if you change anything in the inspector window or over here or anything, if you delete stuff, it won't save it to the actual project. It'll let you uh, modify this in real time. So let's set this like speed down to three. And then now we can see that we're much slower. Um, but when I exit play, my speed went back up to 10. So just make sure that if you're doing changes that you want saved, that you're not in the play mode. So let's go ahead and save the project and set the behavior type back to default. Very important, don't skip that step. Set it back to default, save again, and now we're ready to start training. So in order to train, we need to get out of Unity and we need to go into a terminal and let's get a fresh terminal. And we're gonna go into the ML agents uh, package, right? That we cloned from the GitHub, GitHub repository. And when we're, when we're in that repository, we're gonna wanna be able to see how our agent is training. We can use TensorBoard to do that. So once you're in the ML agents from the GitHub repository, you're just gonna hit TensorBoard, and then you're gonna set the log directory to results. This is only working because we're in ML agents and the folder is called results. And then we can set a port. And I already have this running over here in this window. When you run that, you get this local host and we can go and look at our tensor board over here. Okay, so now that that's going, we're going to need another terminal, right? We can minimize that. And what we wanna do here is we wanna go back into the ML agents the same directory we were just in. And actually we want to go inside the configuration folder. Um, so now we're in this config folder that holds all of my YAML files. And we have to create a new configuration YAML file for this project. So we can do that in Ubuntu by just saying cat, going like this, and then naming this. Um, we want to name this the same name as our project. So we're just going to say roller ball tutorial and then we're gonna add on config.yaml. Okay, so when we do that, now the terminal is asking me what text do I wanna put in that YAML file? I have that pulled up over here. So we're gonna have this behavior role, which I think in our Unity editor, we called that rollerball. So let's go, go ahead and, and change that to rollerball. Let me make sure I got the spelling right. Yep. And we're going to set the learning algorithm to PPO. We set all these hyperparameters, the network settings, the reward signal, some stuff about the reward signal, and uh, some other basic functions for the behavior. So you can investigate all of these pecul uh, peculiar hyperparameters later, but just know for now, this is the general setup you need to have. So I'm just gonna copy all this stuff and paste it into my YAML file. And I'm gonna hit I'm on Ubuntu, so I can just hit Control shift d and it saved that YAML file. So I just created a YAML file, and I put all these hyperparameters in it, and I made sure the name of my behavior uh, was the same as the name of my behavior uh, that we specified in the script earlier. So now that we have that, we can back out of the uh, config folder, and we're going to call... I'm just going to load it up here. So we're going to call ML agents learn. That is going to start the training. And we need to specify where the YAML file that we just created is. So we just put that in the config rollerball tutorial um, <coughs> config file. And actually, this is spelled differently, right? <coughs> Make sure your spelling is correct. And then we also need to set a run ID. So let's just call it rollerball test. And if you use dash dash force, that allows you to run this multiple times in case you have to edit stuff and come back and you can use the same run ID. Um, so as soon as you hit this, if it's working, you're gonna see this big unity diagram. That's so good. You should feel so good if you see that. Run back, oh goodness, run back over to your unity editor and hit the play. If you wait too long, it'll time out. So make sure you're, you're not just sitting there. 
So it's learning. Our agent is learning. You can see it's not doing a very good job. It just keeps falling off the floor right now. But it's getting a little bit closer. It's getting a little bit closer to this, uh, the target cube each time. And if we go to our tensor board that we set up earlier, and we refresh this page, we can see here our losses, our policy loss, our value loss, um, our policy down here, stuff about our policy that we're learning. Um, and it's kind of slow because it's taking a while to learn, but it's doing it. So eventually this will get populated. Um, one thing I want to mention before we, before we conclude here is that you'll see this warning down here on the communication IP versions. Um, that's okay. Just make sure that that doesn't turn into an error. So just make sure your dependencies are all compatible and stuff like that. Um, so it's great. We did it. Congratulations. If you got this far, far, you should feel good. We just made our own scene. We set it up. Uh, we made our own scene in Unity 3D using the ML Agents package and we defined how our agent should interact with the environment, a reward signal it should get, the behaviors it should observe in order to learn actions to take, what those actions should look like when they're taken. So that's it guys, that's all you really need to know as far as the basics go for creating these things and getting them training. There's a lot more complicated stuff um, that hopefully we'll be able to show in the future, but for now, that's it. And thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm gonna drop all the links I used to create this tutorial from the official Unity documentation in the uh, description below. And also, if you wanna check out our lab's website, you can go to npcrlab.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope this was helpful.